Welcome back everyone to Let's Play World of Waves 2 as Japan, episode number 33, maybe. Also known as the Will Tortuga Center, the camera correctly, <laughs> on the window simulator. Eh, I'm batting like 80%, maybe a little bit less. I do what I can. <laughs> I'm obviously not doing it intentionally, but I do. I, I just want to say that I am aware that the camera should be centered. <laughs> I just don't have an easy way of reminding myself because this game. Yeah, look, if I can just blame somebody else for a moment, I blame Rule the Waves, which forces me not to record it as a window, but makes me record it as a desktop, you know, trimmed desktop capture mode. Just because they got windows that don't get captured. Anyway, um, so the last war went really well. Then we went a little bit insane. Tried to squeeze out maybe uh, one too many uh, daigojis. I'm going to be happy when we have four, but it probably was a mistake to try to get four. We're living with that mistake now. We've already invested, what, three, at least three months, and that's, you can say that that's not that much, 15 million, but I am so happy with this ship in general that we're going to try our best to keep it. And it's nice that at least we can suffer building two, and in two months we'll be able to suffer building um, the one that is currently halted right now for lack of funds. So it's, a, it's an exciting time to be in the Japanese Navy because we've just vanquished one of our rivals, the ja uh, the Russians, <clears throat> leaving us in for like firmly, firmly in control of Northeast Asia. We left them with their Kamchatka holding. Eh, you know, I, I didn't do it for any kind of historical reasons. I did it just to, because I'm lazy. Not, okay, it's partly laziness, but it is actually just, um, also micro like uh, also taking into consideration, I should say, uh, viewer time. Nobody wants to see me micromanage the foreign station stuff. It's really annoying. It's already annoying enough to do this. And I know I can put foreign sh uh, ships on foreign stations, but then they usually have very bizarre behaviors. It's probably okay for Japan because there's only three sea zones that we have right now. But if we had more sea zones, they like wander randomly and you can find them in places they shouldn't be. And I don't know. It's I don't understand the algorithm. It'd be nice if they were just like frozen in home at foreign station and maybe it took them one extra like if you wanted to deactivate them from foreign stations it would take one extra month but then you didn't have to worry about where they were they would just appear back at your home port after foreign station was canceled i guess it's, that's not as realistic that's much more of an abstraction than the game's current system but anyway another idea is to build the dock size up we don't have the means to do that yet by means i mean funds so, how are we looking? I'm going to refer back to this, even though we already took a look at it. I think we're doing pretty much okay on everything. We could probably... I think we could stand to build a few more Corvettes, and that's one of the priorities. As soon as we have enough money um, saved up, we're, it's going to be tight because although I'm saying, hey, we finished this and that money is completely, completely sent um, free so we can build our second, it's not quite true because these things require maintenance. So having one more ship, even under reserves, is still going to take around 400. So you can think of the cost of this one as 5.4 million, um, effectively. So it's going to be a little bit tight, but I don't see anything we can really do in the first little turn here of this episode, so we'll just end the turn. I probably need to micromanage the mothballing a little bit better. So we have somebody on foreign stations. Is this done? No, it's still not. So I need to do something about this situation. We need to, maybe we just need to send one of the Kushinos down. I thought I sent, hmm. You know what would be the best idea is just to send a few more Asama Marus down there. And we're not expecting too many mines to show up in Northeast Asia unless we fight Russia. Excuse me, so this actually might be a good idea um, to get, what was the amount? To get 1250, we only need two ships. I'm guessing. Let's hope. So we'll stick on foreign stations for one more turn. And then we'll see how that goes. LP to four boats. 
<laughs> That's a great, that is a great graphic. <laughs> um, improves invasion capability. That's that's what El Pita Ford, uh, El Pita Ford boats are. Okay, I don't recognize the term. I probably know this by a different name or maybe a model. <clears throat> but I'm guessing this is like a <clears throat> what are they called? The the like the boats in D Day. Those little like invasion not invasion tractors but i can't remember what they're called h oh, i don't why does the letter h come to mind anyway new torpedo bomber is ready for service okay and okay i'm so funny i clicked through the one that said that we actually have this uh the new battleship completed so we'll we'll resume this the fact that we're positive on balance is amazing Let's put you into reserve fleet. And foreign station is now satisfied. Fantastic. And that is costing us not very much because these are, they're really, really, really cheap <laughs> to maintain. So I guess that means we can actually design our new Corvette pretty quickly. Um, before that, before I do that, I do, <clears throat> I still want to look around for things I can mothball. It's actually kind of hard to figure out what, what stuff needs to go in. Well, look at that. Let's mothball these. Um, the reason why I'm doing this is because these we're so far away from tensions that are going to amount to something. So we can actually be a little bit crazy. Oh, my phone. Interesting. Um, yeah, so let's... Uh, maybe if we put the carriers on mothball... I don't, uh, so the main thing we want out of the carriers is just the air groups. And I, I still don't know exactly how much an effect the crew quality has on... Uh, the crew, the carrier crew quality has on the, the airplane's combat effectiveness. Because in some... I mean, look, at damage control, yeah. But most of the time, what is it? Like, I'd say like 95% of the time, 99% of the time even... We don't really care about the carrier's crew themselves. We only care about, like, does this affect spotting time, though? Because in that case, yeah, then we do care. They aren't that expensive either. 242 for our carrier. In fact, we can mothball this one safely since um, we really don't want to use that in combat. So that'll save us just a small amount, but it was more an exercise in critical thinking than anything else. I really like the Chun Marus. Too bad we lost several of them to... I think we only lost them one in maybe combat, but most of them to submarines. What a bunch of BS. Um, this is the one I'm debating putting down to mothball. Uh, yeah, it's short range. I'm going to do it just to save us that extra little tidbit. Okay, let's end the turn. Two new destroyers. So our ship construction screen is sitting pretty empty. That's good. And we're, yeah, we're positive on budget. I'm gonna push as far as I can before developing the Corvettes. Oh, we got a real turn coming up. Uh, either that or my computer is dying. <laughs> okay, here we, here we go. Our scientists are happy to report improved depth charge racks. <clears throat> that would be perfect timing for our Corvettes. <clears throat> Excuse me. New float plane scout prototypes ready for evaluation. That's right. We had these super... They are still the best. That's insane. What was up with these old ones that five years later we cannot even duplicate the technology that went into these? It's, it's really amazing. And honestly, it would be great to see reliability... So maybe we should actually... Wow, the range is just so bad on these other ones, though. I, I can't do it. It's just incredible. We're just wasting money trying to get a better float plane. We can't... And this one was seriously insane. It was faster than, like, the American fighters, if I remember, at that time. I mean, even for years, a couple years in the future. Okay, well, giving up on the float plane scouts, even though that's the oldest thing... It's just so good. It's, I guess it's impossible to replace. Let's go move to flying boats. 
we have a lot of these too, so it's better to get these upgraded sooner rather than later when the war comes. So float plane, no, sorry, flying boat. First priority, I think we'll go with reliability and range. And I, I know that speed could be, we could make a case for speed here, but we'll do that. Oh, and we have enough money. Let's go ahead and try to build up better knocks. I don't think we're gonna need much more than 50,000. Look at, not for a while. Let's, let's be reasonable. Okay, a naval conference in London. I have never seen this before, so I got scared. Oh, I forgot to update to 1.1 or 1.20. A naval conference in London has agreed to raise the displacement limit for light cruisers to 10,000 tons. Uh, obviously, this is like an official announcement that the game now recognizes light cruisers at 10,000 tons. Tonnage is, well, not right now in 1.18, but as soon as I upgrade, if I ever remember to, tonnage will be the indicator, or not the indicator, but the, the um, functional input <laughs> to blockades and stuff like that so which is good it's very good obviously because then um you don't worry about strategic points which is such an abstraction there's our asw improved depth charge racks good and set back in our console six inch dual purpose mounting Ooh, dual purpose mounting okay i'm seeing some ships getting some uh, a little bit aged I think we should probably do a bunch of refits. By the way, we also got director secondaries. Are we already sitting? Uh, it looks like we're already sitting at the maximum for that. And this is cross deck fire, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it is. It's a ship that I think we'll keep around for a while because it's still very effective. Um, it, I, this is a ship which can actually function in a battle line. Yeah. I mean, it may be lost, but remember, the only, uh, not the only, but almost the only way I ever lose a ship is to torpedoes. It even has Torpedo Defense 1, that's great. So it can probably take one torpedo and stay afloat. Usually my ships, <laughs> usually, remember that battle cruiser from earlier in this series. So a big usually, but usually they survive one torpedo. Um, okay. Fire control is not the rate of fire. And this guy has the one. Yeah, this is the one gun. <laughs> I don't often scrap destroyers, but this is probably the one exception. It only has five torpedo tubes. I'm just going to scrap this one altogether. And it was the only ship left of her class. We'll start refitting these other ones. Um, yeah, we don't care about any of those things. And the Ak Akakazis as well. We're, uh, this will cost us a fair amount just because the we're stopping the mothball. Um, okay, good. How are we doing over here? So these ships actually can't leave because we need them for foreign stations. Well, that's the theory, but... We can actually replace them, I think. Is this a one-to-one? -one? Let's look. These are 1,000, and these count for, I think, 7,500. Um, it's 25%, right? So, yeah, 750. So that means we, if we have eight of these, we need 10, 11. We need 11 of these, which I, I'm sure we don't have enough of. Okay, we can still do this in stages. So how many do we have? We have seven. It's kind of an awkward number. So six would put us at 4,500. That means this is, like I said, an awkward number, 5,250. We can do, we'll move these and we can do um, five at a time. And that's half of them? Yeah, it is, so we can just do four at a time. In fact, if we wanted to, we can be a little bit more penny pinching can stop two from going that's gonna put us at what nope too many so we can only save one if we don't do yeah okay we'll still save it oh god i have to do this the the hard way okay we did it did <laughs> it it worked so we'll, we'll leave one home as a mothballed and the rest are going okay good so we'll send four of these 
Oh, next turn, right. We'll wait one turn and then we'll do that. And you guys are in Northeast Asia, so... We probably just want to do a refit on these. Wow, these are... Oh, well, 1927, they were just refits. Those are fine. These are 19... Let's just go through all our ships, right? 1915, 1927, those are fine, fine, fine. These are new. 1921, these are due for an upgrade. Um, director secondaries? I, I'm a little bit surprised that we even have that option. Do we need director secondary four-inch guns? No. We, we definitely don't, but we do need... Ah, increased elevation, that was the thing. Okay. Uh, we're going to forgo director on the secondaries here. I would love to, but basically this the the four inch the four four inch guns per side are really not going to make much of a difference. The eight inch guns, those are the important ones. I think we might even have we do. How expensive do we want to go here? How long for the world are these heavy cruisers? I don't think very long. Twenty five speed. Yeah, I, I think these are basically light cruiser killers, and like firmly firmly entrenched in that role they they're not even going to hold a, a candle to other other nations heavy cruisers so and they honestly they're vulnerable even to heavy cruisers i mean light cruisers only seven thousand tons so they're very very light okay well given the increased elevation it's going to increase their accuracy as well improving guns director firing yeah i know i know all these things but it's just not worth our money at this point Kind of cool when you can't upgrade everything to the, the maximum. I mean, you, we can, but we we aren't. We have compelling reasons not to. Because that does feel a lot more like real navies, which didn't just have only the best type of ship. I mean, look at the Americans and the Japanese in World War II. They bo were both lugging around World War I ships. And I think that's a cool dynamic, yeah. So, and, you know. And the Japanese didn't use their, didn't had many ships that didn't use the best radar or even any radar, and that was a huge advantage for the Americans, who also didn't all have radar, but you know more so than the Japanese. Okay, so Chunchun Maru's 1924, that's acceptable. 1924, these are out in 1924. 1924 is fine, four years. They don't need to be resurfaced quite yet. Kosamis are 1918? What? Am I reading this right? Okay, you guys need to be refit. I'm surprised they weren't obsolete. And they already have increased elevation? What? Is it possible even to do this? Oh my gosh, it is. Well, they have two 5-inch guns. This is madness, in my opinion. Just pure madness. Wait a second. Don't do it. Don't do it. That would make them a lot better against destroyers, but I think... Okay, we can't do that. Darn it. That would have been really good, unless we drop their secondary guns. Now, we can't do dual purpose on these secondary guns yet, which is obviously what these were intended for. I, I'm, yeah, but I, I think we can do this. Uh, it's funny one of these guns is exactly equal to the weight so I'm not actually doing anything I'm just exchanging secondaries for torpedoes without changing my total weight remaining which is frustrating <laughs> we don't need AA guns on these if they're targeted by an aircraft it's really a good thing that that aircraft is not targeting something better so we don't really care about putting AA guns the light and medium do not affect other uh, defense against um, other ships defense against aircraft. They only def defend this ship itself, so that's why we don't care. Ah, this is tough, and since we don't have AA, and that's not a big deal yet, obviously it is better not to have these secondaries because they're meant for dual purpose. So we'd probably do something like this even. It That ended up working out really well as a means to save weight for the triple tubes, and this is now a very, very deadly, in fact, I mean, you've kind of earned it at this point. Um, that cost. That is very expensive. Okay, I did not realize how expensive it is to increase the number of tubes. 110. 
Really, I think I'll do one tube, so we'll get a broadside of seven. It's a little bizarre. Put two guns back on there. Do the central range finder. Not sure how this is going to work, but that is obviously much less expensive. So increasing the number of tubes is actually pretty expensive. That's good to know for the future knowledge. This is still a good ship, 32 knots. Unfortunately, it's 32 at coal, so we know it can burn out. But yeah, we'll go ahead and take this is a bit of probably a bit more expensive than it's worth, but we'll do it anyway. Because it is, I mean, we when we look at the almanac and we see so many destroyers, we should be careful that this doesn't actually mean like 19 or whatever it will be after we, we rebuild the rest. The remaining 9,000 tons that is not currently in service that is being rebuilt, those are not top notch destroyers. Now I don't think the same can be said, basically the same can be said for their, any of the other nations, but it's good for us to think that, you know, it might be worth for us to, worth it for us to build, excuse me, it, it might be worth it for us to build new destroyers that are better and even scrap some of the old ones, even though they don't cost that much. I mean, they don't, um, the maintenance is pretty cheap, so it in general, I would say it's better to send them to a, a, a warrior's death, a, war, a warrior's retirement, let's say. Okay, all good here, all good here. One turn, and then we redo these. Now, wait, 19, yeah, these have been redone already. Um, these are 1921, so they actually probably need to be rebuilt as well. That is a lot of ammo. Actually, it's not a bad time. No, we probably want to keep that much ammo, but... It's not a bad time with tension so low for us to change rounds per gun. It doesn't affect too much as far as cost goes. It just increases the rebuild time to 12 months, which we don't want. Actually, it should change less for destroyers, I think. No, nope, it doesn't. Okay. I thought that they made this change. Like a, it, Obviously, if it takes a destroyer 12 months to be rebuilt, it would not take 12 months for a destroyer. <laughs> to get the ammo amount changed, especially because the caliber guns is going to make that a lot easier. I can understand, you know, rounds per gun storage, especially if you decrease it. No, I guess the decreasing it is still... You need to take the space that you were using for that and repurpose it, so that's, yeah, that's still expensive. Okay, we have increased elevation. Um, we could go same way here with centrals. I don't think we're going to do that. So basically, let me reopen these just to make sure I'm not mucking up anything. This is probably going to be a, just a straight refit. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. We're not replacing machinery. Are you nuts? Although, you know, have I ever tried doing that on destroyers? I imagine I have, but even these 1920s. Oh yeah, right. Next turn. So we'll look at it with these destroyers. Okay. Good, we're getting a lot of refits done. And we finished six inch coastal battery, fantastic. Armor development, inclined belt. Okay, good. Um, our science have made unexpected turret and gun mounting. Oh, well there's the dual purpose. Of course it happens, you know, one month, exactly one month after we send a bunch of our destroyers for refits, but the biggest stupid thing about that is our, our heavy cruisers would actually benefit from that. And we had that extra space and everything. What a bummer. Okay, let's get four of these to be rebuilt. Let's see, what does replaced machinery look like? For a vessel which costs 3.3 million, replacing the machinery costs still one third of the, yeah, still one third of the total vessel. And what does that mean? If you want, it gives you 90 weight, which I guess means one extra torpedo per tube. That's a 33% increase in torpedoes. It's pretty good. It's gonna be better than the speed, which is two knots. So that's 10% for being generous. Slightly less, I guess, you know, 7%. Not much of an improvement there. Um, Yeah, we're not going to replace machinery, but I, just, I was trying to think if there's ever a situation where this would be useful, because these are obviously never going to be, they will never be restricted by naval disarmament treaties. So I can't see a, a situation where you would ever want to just, uh, replace destroyer machinery, 
noting that the cost is 3.3 and seeing that the cost for a new one after that is like for rebuilding is like 1.3 you don't even get three full destroyers so eh, I can't see it um that said with seven remaining okay now we can dual dual no we shouldn't be able to yeah error not research dual purpose main guns on dds so we do have the secondaries we can use but um and these actually have a lot of four inch guns this would probably benefit even more from central rangefinder not enough weight remaining to do that i guess this is also going to be just a straight refit so we'll I close and I redo that to, in case you're wondering is just to make sure I didn't leave any changes. That's the, if they had like a reset button right here where I could just go back to what it was when we first started, when we first opened the window, that would be, uh, that's the same thing as what I'm doing essentially by closing and reopening. And I don't think if there's anything else I'm gonna do with only seven tons remaining, there's really nothing we can do. Yeah, nothing we can do. Let's go ahead and save and close. And we'll get the other four when those guys come back. Um, we'll sell this, even though we may go to war with the Germans. I feel like we're getting a lot of technology nice. Ooh, close to my... <gasps> ah, it's almost there. Okay, so where are the aircraft? Are they currently on the Antake? We do have some people. They will obviously be put into reserve. The Antake will be scrapped and we'll get some new stuff. That's that's going to be a very good, a very positive development. And we did um, decline the one carrier battle that we had access to. I'm still not sure what the Russians have as far as carriers go. They have one carrier. Why did I not accept? It's 10,000. This might even be their conversion. Probably not. It might be a purpose build, but even a purpose build at 10,000, this probably, I'm guessing this only has somewhere, it could have as many as 20 to 25, but maybe it'll even tell us. Yeah, 26 aircraft. That is a believable number. I don't know if there's fog of war built into these numbers, but that's believable to me. Um, so we could have just, I think we could have dominated that fight. That would have been good. So if we didn't take it, it would have been kind of annoying to fight. So a lot of micromanagement for those carrier battles. So it really does drive me away from the game a little bit that there's so much micromanagement. It's just you ha it requires an extra level of patience to do the carrier battles. You're rewarded for it because it's, it's, you know, it's a lot of fun. But it's about as much fun, maybe only slightly more fun, to do carrier battles um, because they're usually mixed with surface fleets as well. So it's, it's a little bit more fun to do carrier plus surface fleet but it's much, much more effort. So, you know, sometimes I prefer not even to do them. And you guys are still out, okay. Um, two inch quality one, are you kidding me? Ah, that's insulting, but we'll take it, I guess. Just to stop us from having to research it. Flying boat. I think we're developing one right now, we are. And this one is slightly better in range, slightly faster in speed. Yeah, and the ordinance is better. I mean, everything is better. Okay, we, we'll, we'll say okay to this, even though we're about to get a new one. I wish we, they would just let us put that offer on the table for a couple months or add it to the, add it to the list of, I mean, yeah, why don't they just add it to the list? <laughs> it's weird. Okay, but the Sumitai Mizumis are not back, so we'll wait one more month before we do anything. And uh, I guess we should build a Corvette pretty soon. They're not back still. Okay, those four destroyers must be it. Okay, submarines. We've neglected submarines a fair amount. New flying boat prototypes. Now we have these in the development. Uh, yep, yeah, something significantly better on top. Significantly better. Better range, better speed. The only thing it doesn't have is better toughness, but the same bomb load. So we'll accept this one. 
um, torpedo bombers. I always like these offers because we didn't have to pay for the development. And this one also seems to be better. I mean, I, I'm only looking at max speed, cruise speed, these are better. Range is much worse. Okay, so they sacrificed. I like it. I, I, I think that's random rules, but to me, it would always make sense that longer range um, would have less max speed, less cruise speed. So this like fits my role-playing immersion story. Uh, we'll probably decline this one then because bomb, bombs don't matter. Range matters. Honestly, speed does matter. Is 100 enough that we are okay with that? No, I don't think so. I think we want better than that. I honestly think that we might need to obsolete the Kawanishi Hind B because her range is, is very bad. Yeah, and we, we'll probably just want to focus on this newer one. Between this one and uh, between the Aichi Jinja and the Kawanishi, I'd prefer the Aichi. She has slightly lower range, but she's significantly faster. So I'll cancel this and let's go to the aircraft types. Do a little bit of management here because I haven't obsoleted stuff in a while and it's probably time. So these flying boats are, I'm guessing, yeah, they've outlived their operational date. Cause, well, obsolete a bunch of those. Fighters, we only, okay, well, I know what we're, <laughs> what we're requesting next, a fighter. Speed. And reliability or maneuver? I think we want maneuverability. Yeah. So that's next. We have two torpedo bombers here. And I think we'll just keep the one with better range. Yeah, the, it's such an insignificant change in speed for much better. Oh, but it is 277 versus 266. So maneuver and toughness fall, but I was actually really disappointed to learn that maneuverability does not impact the the aircraft's ability to target an enemy ship. Like, eh, it probably does make sense. Torpedo runs are usually straight and level for a long time. Okay, I think I'm still gonna take the higher range one. So we'll obsolete. I'd prefer to know exactly what I'm dealing with. I don't wanna have ones that are mixed and matched. I don't want a, a variety. So that would be the worst thing in my opinion. Out of these two, I think we only have one decisive winner. Although I'll wait a little bit longer to see the, we should get some reliability data from these soon. And look at that, monthly balance is actually kicking up very nicely. Probably that's with tensions. Yeah, so I keep talking about these Corvettes that we haven't built yet, but we're go, oh my gosh, forget it. Corvettes, who needs them? Okay, so first order of business is to scrap the old, well, first order of business is actually to make sure that we actually get a new carrier. All right, so the, I think the limit is, okay, the limit is at least this, but can we go to 28? Yes, and we, that must be our limit then. Yeah, okay, good. So let's put, it, let's just park it right at the max. I don't even know if we'll need this much, but Okay, I'm seeing a lot of stuff I don't like right away. Like those turrets. Okay, good. So we're in good shape. Drop this down. I think all of our guns are just going to be main turret guns. So can we make... Yeah, we can do 4-inch dual purpose. Perfect. We will. We'll add more ammunition, I think. And now we're just going to add all the... Can we add all of them? I forget. You might only be able to add them to one side. Um, do we have double per double? I think we have to make these all, let's clear. I think we have to make them single turrets. Let's just uh, do a quick check. If I do this and I do single, I can do that. Now if I add another turret, which is double. Yeah, good. So it's it's so right now it'll say we can't do it. 
Um, and decrease. It says we can do it. Cannot have tertiary guns. Okay, wow. I don't even know why this had tertiary guns. Bring this down to tertiary. If we want secondaries, we would make them non dual purpose. I mean, we would make them dual purpose, but we don't want to override. They have a limited increase. If you have two sets of calibers at, uh, that are dual purpose, they do limit each other. Actually, it's only the lower gun that adds, I think, only 40% of its, um, or maybe it's only reduced by 40%, so it's maybe it adds 60% of its uh, strength, dual purpose strength to the calculations. And anyway, in any case, it is still better than not having them. It's strictly better, but it's usually not as efficient, so we might avoid that. But I think we are going to need all the guns since what I'm sensing is, can we do one and two? That we're going to need to use single turrets for these, and that's not going to be good. Starboard wing. Just trying to grab every combination I can see. Is that allowed? Oh my god, we can, it is. Okay, how many was this? It's kind of cool to see them off the, the front too. I like. I really like that. So this is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So 12 four inch guns. That's not, I mean, it's really not that much if you think about it from a secondary gun standpoint, but it's something. I'd love if we could, you know, make these in double turrets, but for some reason we cannot. Torpedo defense of two, I think that's, you know, probably the right amount for carriers. At 28,000, I would actually go more on them, frankly, but uh, incline belt. No, I don't think we want this right now. This, as far as I remember, lowers the chance that your belt will be impacted, but increases the chance that your um, deck will be impacted. But it does give like a, a bonus to your belt. So I don't think, I don't know if it makes any sense to do it for us or not, but I guess we're going to armor our deck at two anyway, so we will do it. Put our thir turrets at 3, 2.5, secondaries at 0 because we don't have them. So I, we could have left the armor there, it doesn't matter. 30 knots is a bit quick because one of my fears about these ships is that they head in the wrong direction too quickly. <laughs> um, do we want a magazine box? I don't know if that is wise. We prefer not to get like, yeah, I, I don't think we'll use it on an aircraft carrier. But I honestly, yeah, I might, I might be interested in people's feedback on magazine box. And here's the problem. That's way too many, or way too few. Okay, we might not be able to get 99, which is my favorite number, but getting 84, are you kidding me? That would be spectacular. And let's look around. Maybe there's other places we can do some weight savings. Yeah. Um... That is not an area I would like to save on weight, actually. Light anti-aircraft is important. <clears throat> 84? I mean, this is actually looking pretty good. We can get that up to 48 light anti-aircraft guns. So it is possible for us to add some tertiary second dual purpose guns. Not sure it's worth it just to get six of them. We can't, uh, I mean, uh, although we cannot squeak out another unit machinery. What's this? Reduces damage from engine hits. Okay, it's more than an aircraft worth, though. I don't know. Good questions. First of all, let's see. Error. Insufficient top side. Oh, okay. Right, because I did these guns. Right, they're gonna limit that, so we're not gonna do them because I think even, yeah, even one of them is gonna make this worse in terms of anti-aircraft defense, so I think we won't do it. The 81, what would we want to do with that? Actually, my question now remains, does fire control affect the accuracy of dual purpose guns? Because I really don't need this I don't expect these ever to engage any ships, so I'd be happy with even local director um, if we were able to use the AA directors to compensate for that only, even if it's only against aircraft, that's all I care about for these guns. 
tough decision. Maybe we, okay, I don't know. Well, the, the, the armor just needs to drop because we can, we can get another aircraft. We can get two other aircraft. In fact, we can do one more aircraft and do that. Oh, I don't even remember what it was. What was it that we could do? Oh, unit machinery. I do see some advantages of doing that as well. But no, I'm gonna stick with the aircraft for now. Right now, the best defense is a strong offense and a strong defense. <laughs> and just having more carrier or more aircraft in the skies, I think, is gonna help us here. Spot value will be 45. Okay, I'm pretty happy with all this. Um, and I just need to pause real fast and figure out what the name of this is. Well, I confess I may hear some groans over this, <laughs> but don't worry, there will, there will definitely be one, if not two more carrier classes, because I'd like to get our air capacity up to 99. Um, this class will be named the Control V Paste Tsunami. Um, okay, good. So with the extra weight remaining, maybe take this up to 150. Actually, so we can actually get four. And if we go to two, we can't get dual purpose. Okay. Yeah, all right, let's just leave it like this. Um, we may choose to add secondary guns later. Actually, wait. If we add the three, four, ah, it's perfect. Oh my goodness, it's perfect. Okay. I would have liked to, now that I, I'm looking at everything, I surely would have liked to add a conning tower. Conning tower armor, just so the bridge was not destroyed by splinters. How expensive is that, 50? Does that mean we just basically remove these and we're okay? It doesn't make sense for them to be there anyway, from like a immersion standpoint. <laughs> you gotta land, but don't hit the guns. Let's leave it here. And we have a little bit of weight remaining that we can play around with if we need to, but two inches everywhere. We just got two inches of armor everywhere. Okay, well, I don't think there's anything else to do. Welcome the Tsunami class carrier. Now this is on slower technology development and this is 1928. So you gotta think of this as like a 1924 carrier. Wow, that is damn good for a 1924 carrier. Uh, not that this is not that this design itself is perfect. I'm not sure. Um, look at I mean obviously I design it to be a, the best that I can think of, so it's as perfect as I can think of in this moment. But just as just to say that it is a really good design for the time, especially because I don't think people even have some nations. I don't even know if they have purpose-built light carriers. And here we are rolling out with full fleet carriers, holding as many as you know, the American carriers in World War II, which were, you know, well known, famed for their huge aircraft capacity. Uh, we didn't do deck spot, right? Deck park. I guess this is no longer an option or we have to research it or something. Anyway, we're, this is insane that we have 86 capacity without deck park. <laughs> well, it's a big aircraft carrier, 28,000. So we'll save it. We'll take four months and five million. Well worth it for the investment. We're gonna need probably, well, it's only seven more months, but we're probably gonna need this battleship to finish before we can start on the new ones. But I'm gonna call this video to a close here. We're um, already into the 40 minutes. So thanks for watching and until the next one, take care.